Hey everyone, welcome to Sticks and Sips. This is the Drew State Virtual Happy Hour. I am Frank, Frankie Drinks Moreno. Uh, I will be, I'm the Cigar and Spirit Pairing Specialist for Drew State. Uh, I will be your host tonight as uh, we talk about some great spirits, talk about Drew State cigars, share some knowledge, hear some great stories, and above all, enjoy some sticks and some sips. So plus tonight, Tonight, I'm giving away five of these Pappy, beautiful Pappy Van Winkle pewter ashtrays right from Subculture Studios. Uh, all you have to do is submit a question. And if we pick your question tonight, uh, it could be for me, it could be for any one, one of our guests. You guys, you guys win. So real simple. I'll keep on reminding you. So keep those questions coming. Hashtag Ask Frankie Drinks. And so let's get, uh, let's get the party started. So let's take a look at the menu for tonight. What do we have on tonight? Our uh, sips, black and whiskey, black and whiskey. And our guests, the very infamous Rob Dietrich, master distiller of black and whiskey, Jack Spethman from Benny's, our stick for the evening, only the best, Liga Provada number nine, and then obviously our raffle. So you guys have a full show packed for tonight. Uh, let's, uh, let's check into the Zoom lounge and see who's in there. And uh, hey, Joey, Drew, welcome. What's up, What's up kiddo, man? I'm, I'm doing it. Got my black in Manhattan going with my metal ice cube. Got my nine, I'm all set. All right, that's fantastic. We got Robin St. Pierre, our Drew State uh, specialist with Binnies. Yes, that's me. I got a number nine and a Dr. Pepper. Awesome. I, I like that combo. We'll talk about that later. Uh, we have Mr. Rob Dietrich in the house all the way from Denver. Yeah. Rob, welcome. Pleasure to be here. Awesome. Awesome. We have Jack Speth. We have Jack Spethman, and he's in the world's largest humidor. It makes him look so small. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. It's a pleasure to be on the show with you guys. Awesome. We're, we're very honored to have you. And, of course, what would a Sticks and Sips be without the man that needs no introduction, Mr. J.D.? How's it going, brother? Yo, yo, that's your line you use for everybody, that this guy needs no introduction. That's why nobody knows what the fuck is going on, because you're not introducing nobody. Correct. I'm, 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 don't worry, it's, it's a process. It's a process, you know? But when I say that, it, it, it helps me get, like, remember the name. So, uh, so that's, that's part of it. So, uh, JD, we do have a very special announcement to make, right? You drop, you, you drop some news. You were supposed to drop yeah, it yeah. on this show, but you know the the whole DE crew said, "Hey, let's drop the information early." So, uh, so what do we got? All right, Frank. Well, thank you for that fine introduction. Uh, so, actually, it is something. It's something that uh, I'm pretty excited about, to be honest with you, Frank. Um, as a matter of fact, this is really a big a big deal for me. It's going to be tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be, let's see, uh, seven o'clock. Oh, wait, my bad. Eight o'clock, eight o'clock uh, on Cigar Coop, his Facebook live stream. So you go to Cigar Coop, uh, which is, you know, real serious industry vet, hardcore uh, media guy. Uh, been in the game for many, many years, decades already. Uh, so anyway. It's going to be a really, a really good interview uh, platform. I hope I don't fuck everything up, but it should be really fun. It's going to be tomorrow, eight o'clock, cigar coop. Thank you very much. So we actually got that, uh, got that graphic up, and made sure everyone's tuned in. I will remind everybody at the end of the show to tune in because everybody loves hearing you speak. You know, we can only imagine what he's going to say, especially if I'm looking up on that black end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's get the party started here. So uh, Drew State Virtual Happy Hour. What's a happy hour without a specialty cocktail? And the specialty cocktail tonight is something that I call the Fade to Blackened Manhattan. You know, I tried to get like two puns in there, two Metallica puns. You know, 
you know, you can, you can give me respects on the comments there, you know, getting two different songs into one. Uh, and I wanted to do something really, really simple. Cocktails you guys can make at home. And, and, uh, and this is a riff on a classic Manhattan. You've got the, the recipe going up on the screen. And, uh, and I'll kind of run you through that. So um, it, uh, basically a, a Manhattan, you've got a whiskey, you've got a sweet vermouth. And what we've done there is, is taking the black and whiskey, fantastic product to use, and then adding the uh, Averna Amaro in there, gets it a nice, rich, deep, dark color. And again, two ingredients, you add bitters, your third ingredient, stir and serve. Uh, it, it doesn't get simpler than that. It doesn't get more delicious than that as well. So uh, basically, those are your ingredients. And then you got the directions that I've gone through. Like, again, real simple. And, uh, and let's run that, uh, that video so you can catch me uh, making it for you. So first, you got to get your ice in there. You can use a mason jar. You can use whatever you like. Uh, get your two ounces of whiskey in, blackened whiskey in this case little one ounce of Averna Amaro. Get your orange bitters in. I think the orange is a great uh, complement to, uh, to the cocktail, offsets the sweetness of the Amaro. You wanna stir it really well. You won't need to chill it and you need to combine both these ingredients. Uh, usually a Manhattan is served straight up, uh, but I like mine's in, uh, with a big block of ice because I live in the 305 and it's hot here. So um, you wanna add a black, Black and cherry, that's my favorite. You choose, you just don't use any of that red crap. And, uh, and there you have your fade to black in Manhattan. So, uh, so I know Joey made his and, you know, and I'm sending you, I've got mine pre-made already, ready for you guys. So I'm gonna take a little sip. Great balance, whiskey, the Averna, the bitters, real mm. nice, uh, real complex, full of flavors. Again, this is one of the uh, Manhattans based on, uh, they named cocktails in the late 1800s on the five different boroughs uh, of New York. And this is one of them. And so this is a very old classic. And if you don't have a Verna Amaro, don't worry. You can substitute sweet vermouth and you're making a classic Manhattan and, and uh, black is, is a great whiskey to use there as well. And um, for those of you that don't know what Amaro is, it's a, an Italian, uh, Herbal liqueur usually uses the digestif. It's got uh, it's infused with a lot of uh, uh, aromatics, and it's just real nice. It's a little syrupy, so you don't need to use any simple syrup when you're doing that. So it's just a a, a great offset. So if you can't, uh, if you don't have any near you, uh, go look at places like Binnie's and ABC and all these great liquor stores that carry a real nice selection. You, I, I guarantee you're going to find those. And, and the Amaro world is incredible. It's uh, got so many, so many choices with that. So uh, as you know, our sip for tonight is Black and Whiskey, uh, one, one of the best bottles you can ever hold. And you get to see that when you're watching Rob take his beautiful beauty pics with the bottle. And... Um, and what is black and whiskey? Black and whiskey is a blend of, of straight rye whiskeys and straight bourbon whiskeys. And they're aged in uh, black brandy barrels. And they have this unique little aging process that they go through. And instead of me talking about black and whiskey, uh, who better to talk about a black and whiskey than my good friend, Rob Dietrich. So uh, Rob Dietrich, what's going on, my man? Thank you, what's up, man? <clears throat> good to see everybody. Um, Always good to see friendly faces. Uh, JD, haven't seen you in a long time, my friend. Uh, so um, Rob, Rob, yeah, I, I'm going to give a quick intro for everyone that you kind of like knows you, Nick, because I'm going to pepper you with some questions here. But uh, Rob was a master distiller at Stranahan's before becoming the blackened, uh, so uh, blackened master distiller. Uh, you, you guys may recognize some of these uh, beautiful whiskeys that, that he made. And, you know, you, you innovated, uh, things like snowflake and diamond peak and those are just legendary legendary whiskeys on top of like tin cup so for you guys that, that ever tasted mm. this stuff you know that that rob's deft hand was involved and and so here we are you are now the master distiller following dave pickerel's uh legendary footsteps and big shoes to fill but i, I couldn't imagine a better person to to fill those than you so welcome 
That's very kind, man. I really, I really appreciate the kind words. Um, I would agree. You know, Dave, uh, Dave was um, very much the legendary craft distiller. Uh, you know, is so many whiskeys out there that have his fingerprint. But I, I'd say uh, the legend that he that he truly left is is black and whiskey. You know, he was so excited. He was a he, you know he was a huge Metallica fan, just as I am. Um, you know, I grew up. I you know I remember the first time hearing uh, uh, Master of Puppets in you know in seventh grade, and and like what the hell is this? I mean, it was you know it's just it was pretty mind blowing. Um, so you know it's 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 pretty extraordinary to you know to follow in the uh, you know the. The, the passion that that Dave always brought to every every project that um, you know that he put his fingers on, and and with this you know when you were when you were talking about the um, you know the merit you know, the blend of the barrels we've got these these beautiful bourbons and there we've got whiskey from uh, you know ten Tennessee we've got bourbon from Kentucky we've got bourbon from Indiana we've got rye from Indiana Canadian rye um, Dave was a huge fan of Canadian ryes I mean there you know there's there's just something beautiful about a, a really well made rye. Um, and rye, you know, I, I love that spiciness, earthiness of rye. Um, and, you know, you, you get that kind of that beautiful uh, um, marriage of, of, of flavors with the with the sweetness of the bourbon. Um, and what, you know, and that's all, those are all aged for, a, you know, an average of eight years in white American oak barrels. Then we do the blend. That's where we cask finish, uh, you, know, you know, a little nod back to the, the snowflake days, um, you know, cask finishing in Spanish barrels, Spanish brandy barrels. The, um, um, it, I really feel like that's just like the backbone. You've got you've got the the, the, the kind of the the heavy you know the, the the heaviness of the rye. You know you got the sweetness of the bourbon, but that backbone is the uh, is that that Spanish brandy barrels. Um, and from that point, we do a, a sonic enhancement, which uh, this is this was Dave's idea. Uh, it was a perfect way to collaborate uh, directly with. Uh, the, the band members and to be able to um, really um, take what we've already known as a traditional methods of distilling and and barrel aging and cask finishing and taking it to a whole nother level with innovation and uh, and we've we've dubbed that uh, that sonic enhancement uh, we call it black noise um, and it's and it's um, it's really a, a pretty extraordinary story how, how we got to that point well I've, I have been on the on the Blacken website, and I recommend it to everybody. And uh, in there, you'll see the uh, collaboration with Mayor Sound and how they uh, they innovated this way. And, and, and just to be clear, it's it's not artificial aging. It's just a, a different way to finish the whiskey. And each one of these has a, a batch number, and the batch number gives you the playlist that was uh, that that particular batch, uh, you know, was sonically enhanced. So that's uh, I think that's a really cool idea. It's it's pretty extraordinary, you know. The um, you know this 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 was really born with uh, you know Dave was also a, a veteran uh, uh, of the army. He was in he was a cadet at West Point, and he became friends with the uh, the, the caretaker of the, the the pipe organ that they have there. It's one of the largest pipe organs uh, in North America, apparently. And the guy was showing him a note on the keyboard of this pipe organ. He said that he was uh, he would not be able to sustain the the note for very long, uh, for fear of literally shaking the vibrating the barrel. Uh, I'm sorry, vibrating the uh, the building off of its foundation. Uh, it was it was it had such a, an aggressive um, um, reaction to the um, uh, to the building. So the guy would uh, so that always stuck with Dave. You know, Dave was um, he always thought, well, you know, what if we could apply this 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 method to barrel aging in some way or, or, or enhancing uh, whiskey. And, and so this was the perfect opportunity to be able to do that. You, you know, when he brought up the idea with Metallica, um, of course, they are very bass heavy uh, band. Um, all of their touring equipment is made by Meyer Sound. Meyer Sound has made the proprietary device that we use to create the sonic enhancement process that we call Black Noise. And, and it was pretty extraordinary. Like I'm a whiskey nerd, you know, I, I, I always have to dive down into the science of, of how this works. Um, I, I'll, I'll go down all these little rabbit holes just to really identify what's going on. And that was one of my first questions was, uh, what's the science behind this? How does, how does this work? And what was really cool was that, you know, Dave took uh, one barrel that we had cask finished in the Spanish brandy barrels and, uh, but did not do a sonic enhancement to it. Took another barrel that was sonic, uh, uh, 
cask finishing, did the sonic enhancement to that, sent samples from both of those barrels off to a lab. And uh, when the results came back, it was, it was extraordinary what uh, the difference was to the whiskey that had been sonically enhanced. So applying that black noise uh, took the whiskey literally past what we call the red line. Uh, so when you're, when you're charring the, the inside of a barrel, all those natural sugars, the natural vanillins, all those natural flavors of the barrel and the wood come up to the burn surface. And, and that's where you're going to get about 50% of your flavor uh, from a whiskey. You're getting hundred percent of the color from, from that barrel. Uh, but the, you know, the flavors are really important that you're pulling from the wood. The sonic enhancement pushes it past that red line, goes past that into the beyond and literally pulls all these flavors in these profiles uh, that, that would really, um, it, it's, it's, it's just a, um, an extraordinary process. The music is played at a very low frequency. So we play it you know, so low that you can't actually hear it with, uh, um, you know, it's not like you're walking into a barrel house and hearing Metallica just blasting because I'm sure that would drive the, uh, you know, the, the, the barrel managers, uh, uh, the, the warehouse guys nuts. Um, but it is, it is played at such a low frequency that it vibrates the, the barrel so vigorously that the whiskey is moving in and out of the barrel at a very rapid pace and picking up all those flavors past the red line. It's, it's pretty extraordinary uh, what a change it, it does make to the whiskey. And where, and where, the, and where the band um, gets to uh, be involved is they, you know, they take turns. Um, they take turns creating playlists for each batch. So for example, batch 97, uh, which is what I'm drinking tonight, uh, that is uh, Robert Trujillo. Uh, Robert Trujillo is the bass player. You got 97? Awesome, Joey. Uh, the, I've, got, uh, I've got 85 and, and a 92. And a 92. I'd, I'd have to do a little, I'd, I'd have to do the math. So uh, the band was formed in 1981. So the very first batch was batch 81. That's where they. That's where we uh, we started um, moving on on through the batches. So batch 81 was the playlist was created by all four members of the band. The uh, and then from that sub subsequent um, batches were uh, it, it started with uh, James Hetfield, then Lars, uh, then Kirk Hammett, and uh, and then Robert Trujillo. And then they just take turns creating their playlists. Cool thing is you can go to blackandamericanwhiskey.com. You can look at your batch number. So if you went and bought a bottle, uh, you went to Benny's, picked up a bottle, and you were uh, you, you saw it was you know batch ninety seven. You can you can go and look up who who created that playlist. Uh, from there, uh, be able to take a photo of that Spotify uh, uh, icon, and it'll populate the playlist of that of that batch uh, that was played for that batch. Um, so it's really. Um, De definitively the fingerprints of the band on every every single every single batch individually i, I think that that's uh that's an amazing uh, amazing tale i think you know for the uninitiated at this given moment and and for the super pros remember the role of wood uh is either additive or subtractive in nature when it's dealing with a distillate inside so uh we could obviously how see how the science is working there but uh but so thank you for that incredible explanation but rob uh i'm gonna go back a little bit so how did you get involved with distilling you know it's it's interesting it's it's not what you would think um it was uh, motorcycles literally uh, i um i was working on a a motorcycle with uh, a friend of mine that uh you know we were very much into alternative fuel and i uh, we found this old motorcycle. It was a, it was a, a Czechoslovakian motorcycle called a Jawa. Uh, that was we found out in the desert in New Mexico, and we we were able to uh, drag that thing back to the house. We pulled the engine out of it. We stuck a uh, uh, an, an engine from a cement mixer. It was a diesel engine, and uh, we stuck that in this bike. Uh, had to chop the frame a little bit, and we were running it on diesel fuel. Uh, and we, then we'd switch it over to vegetable oil. So we were getting vegetable oil from local restaurants, filtering out all the, the French fry chunks and, 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 and potato pieces and, and literally running the bike on, uh, on vegetable oil. And uh, I, met the, uh, I met the original head distiller for Stranahan's uh, in a bar. We were talking about motorcycles and he was attempting to make his motorcycle run off of, 
the heads, which is the, the waste product from uh, the stills. And so we were like, oh, well, let's, let's build a bike together. And uh, he said, yeah, we'll come down to the distillery. I'm working on the bike there. And I was like, you have a distillery? So we, you know, it literally was, uh, um, it was love at first sight. I walked into the distillery and saw that 800 gallon copper still and the smells. And I was like, I need to know how to make this machine run. I want to know how to do this. Um, and I, so I started working on the bottling line. I started, became, I became the barrel manager and just worked my way up. Uh, but I talked him into, uh, creating a third shift uh, so that we could literally distill around the clock. And I, I think I was working for 10 bucks an hour at the time, uh, distilling uh, from 1 a.m. till 9 a.m. And uh, I was living on a horse ranch at the time. So I was literally coming home uh, after, uh, you know, overnight, uh, overnight shift and then working with the horses. And I, I didn't sleep a lot for about four years. I didn't sleep, uh, sleep much, but that's uh, kind of the, the, the quick and dirty version of, of, how I got uh, involved, but I, I was uh, the the third person hired at Stranahan. So, so when we you know when we started, it was it was uh, just three of us doing everything. And then uh, I was very fortunate to um, and very honored to be able uh, you know to be approached by Black and and uh, and carry on the stewardship and the legacy of of, of Dave Pickerel and 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 take Black to to new to new heights. Uh, with with that with that comment though, uh, I, I will ask you: Is there anything new uh, happening uh, for Black in, in the future? We definitely have some fun stuff coming up. Um, always working on uh, different projects. We've got uh, some unique things that uh, you can keep your eyes to the horizon for. Um, you know, no spoilers, but uh, you know, Metallica is turning forty next year, uh, so there might be something special out there on the horizon. Uh, but yes, always, always working on uh, some new innovations for sure. Well, if, if whiskey innovation is kind of uh, your hallmark, so uh, I'm, I'm super excited to hear about what comes. So uh, at, at this moment, I'm going to ask you, because, uh, you know, we, we go back a little, little while and we go back a little while because of, of that guy on the screen there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Jonathan Drew. So tell me how you met Jonathan, how you guys have been working together over the years and been friends. You know, I met uh, I met Jonathan. He he came through uh, the Stranahan's Distillery, and I was I was walking around, and I actually saw his dad first, and I said, "That guy looks like he's with the Rolling Stones." And uh, and you know, my background's in music production. I did uh, I did music production for about ten years, and I can always pick out like you know the musician types, the the uh, you know the artist types, and uh, and as soon as I saw him, I was like, "That guy's got to be uh, he's got to be with a band." And uh, and I started talking to him. And he's like, oh man, you, you got to meet my son. He's, you know, he wants, he wants to make a, he wants to start up a distillery. He's here well, they're doing, they're on the tour right now. Um, it, and, 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 John, and JD, your dad had wandered off the tour. That's how I, that's how I got to talk to him. Cause you were still on the tour and he was just, your dad was off doing what he does, um, what he does best. And uh, uh, so I, that's when I met JD was, uh, was, was at the distillery. Uh, I told him about some weird concoction that I had, I, I had distilled up some marijuana gin at the time. I think that was when we were just legalizing weed in Colorado, and uh, we just we hit it off right away. Uh, so we've done we've done a lot of traveling together. We've uh, we've we've done we've had some fun adventures together. Yeah, working with uh, Frank there. We've had a lot of years now. I don't know how many years it was ago when I went and vi uh, visited the Stranahan Distillery in Colorado, but I, I guess it was like. It was a good seven, eight, nine years ago, right? Some yeah, shit right? like that was yeah. a minute back. And uh, since then, we've done events together. We did all sorts of Rob Dietrich and JD stuff and Stranahan's mixed in. But watching your career, you know, Rob is like uh, in the cigar world, we have what's called, you know, like a master blender. You guys have master distillers. You guys have been using master distillers for, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. How long has that term been out there? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, I think, uh, I think master distiller, it's the, the one thing I, I, I feel about the, the, the term master distiller just means that I know enough to know that I have so much more to learn. And that, yeah, you know, yeah. you know there's, there's always, there's always ways to learn. There's always new ways to make, uh, to make things. There's ways to, you know, create innovation. I think, you know, when I met you, I was the, the head distiller at Stranahan's and then we, you know, I'd, I'd been there for 
12 years or something like that, or, or no, 10 years, I think. Uh, and that's when they, they made me the master distiller. I, it's to me, that's just a, it's just a title. It just means that I got, I got so much more to learn. Yo, yo. So anyway, before, before, um, uh, I forget it. The reason why I had brought it up is because in the cigar industry, no one used the word master blender. That shit didn't exist. It would just be like making some shit up right now. It just didn't, no one even said that to nobody. So I stole that from you. So you don't <laughs> even have a clue as to this interesting fact. It's a factoid. Is that because of you, and I like that name Master Distiller because I didn't know about that shit. I brought that back into the cigar industry. And when Willie was actually titled Master Distiller, uh, Master Blender for Drew Estate, that is the first time anyone in the cigar industry of any company, I don't care who the fuck it is, had used that term. And it was really because of you. That That's whole awesome. idiot. You know what I'm saying? Other guys, yeah, other so companies, cool. go, oh, he's the master blender of this company, master blender. Whenever I hear it, it's like, oh, that's our nomenclature. That's Drew Estate DNA. Right. But that DNA didn't begin at Drew. It began with Rob Dietrich at Stranahan's Master Stilla, and we stole that shit over. That's awesome, man. That's cool. I didn't know that. I, I And I, I've heard you. Um, hold on a second here. Yo, you over at the house? You at your house? I know his house. I think he's over at his house because I've been over there eating and drinking. Near a major intersection. So it's uh that was a sirens going by. Um man, that's you know, that's that's incredible. You know, I I you know they they always you know that that term is is, is master blender was you know always used in in uh, scotches, you know, in, in blending scotches, and that's a uh, a term that in, in the United States uh, for a long time did not have um, a good connotation. And we are actively um, taking that, that term blend and putting back in that positive light. Not only can a blend be um, uh, amazing, but it can be world-class, you know, and that's, that's what, you know, blending is, is an art in itself. You know, that's, there's an art form uh, just in blending. So it's, it's, um, it's really cool that, uh, that you apply that to, to the scar world as well. Yeah. 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 It wasn't applied. A shit was straight jacked. It was stolen. <laughs> Joey, your mic is off. All I'll say is, you know, Joey's mic is off. Joey, yo, 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 yo. Microphone good check. Off. Joey. Joey it's Drew. Off. It's hey, off for a good reason because they don't want me to be splashing all sorts of nonsense that I don't know what to talk about. Oh, oh it was stolen. It was straight up stolen. What's with all that stealing going on at Drew Estate? It's like my <laughs> Hey, listen, good artists borrow, great artists steal. I live by Bingo. that motto. Yeah, so, the way it is. So uh, listen, I have one more one more question for you, Rob. I know I know Blackened is doing something very, very special during Corona. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what you guys are doing uh, to kind of help out the hospitality industry? Yeah, we've got, uh, and, and that's a, that's a great question. You know, it's been, it's been really, um, this is an extraordinary time for everyone. You know, this is, this is, uh, unknown territory. Um, we've got all of our, our, you know, our people that we, that we rely on are those, uh, those guys that are on that, those, those people that are on the front lines. And that's our, that's our bartenders. That's our mixologists, um, our, our, our restaurants, our bars. And we're trying to, you know, every, every way that we can think of to, to, to help, uh, the, the bartending industry out. And uh, Metallica has a, a charity called All Within My Hands, uh, where we have uh, we have do we've donated a significant amount of money to the United States Bartenders Guild, uh, and we uh, we have we have buttons on the uh, the uh, uh, BlackAndAmericanWhiskey.com uh, where you can donate to the the United States Bartenders Guild. Uh, tip your bartender while they're not working, so that when we are working again. Uh, we're all going to be happy and 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 back uh, back in the in the saddle again. So um, it's it's pretty extraordinary. I I couldn't be prouder of the organization that I work for. Um, it really there really is a, a a huge beating heart that that um, that drives everything that uh, Metallica does. All the brands that that, that they uh, put their you know their fingers to. You know they own this brand, and it's it's um, that's what I love about it is that we are you know 
those are those are uh, those are those are the bosses. You know, they are they are um, the the heartbeat that 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 t- carries this thing forward. And we are um, you know very passionate about helping our communities. Uh, the the All Within My Hands charity uh, it was already existing before uh, any of this uh, already happened. He's uh, got uh, got a little a little uh, mezcal there. Yeah. He, um, he- so, you know, it's, uh, so any chance you can get anybody uh, who has a, a, a opportunity to be able to help out our bartenders, uh, you know, visit uh, blacken.com, help out, help out the bartenders. Well, with that, uh, very, uh, everyone needs our support right now, particularly the hospitality industry. So uh, I commend uh, Black and Whiskey for doing that. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say, hey, let's blacken the world. Uh, I want to thank you for the awesome swag, you know. So uh, thanks to my bi- my boy Tim's Tim t- tuning in, Tim Chopolo. Thank you, brother. Uh, I got I got your swag, man. This is like some of the coolest swag next to Drew State swag. So uh, love it. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. So stick around the Zoom Lounge. Uh, we'll probably got some questions for you. And uh, so now uh, I want to move on to talk about our sticks for the evening. And uh, so before I start talking about my sticks, I'm going to say, hey, who's going to help me talk about my sticks? And I, I've got my sticks guest. And that is, uh, that is a gentleman that works at the coolest uh, beer, wine, uh, spirits, liqueurs, and cigars in the Chicago area. Uh, this guy is considered Drew Estate family. He is the head of cigar procurement for Benny's Beverage Depot, and uh, welcome, Jack. Hey, Frank. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's awesome having you uh, on the show. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, we, we kind of have a broad audience, and and uh, and some of us, you know, we, we know Benny's quite well, and uh, a lot of us don't, so kind of give us a little rundown of what Benny's Beverage Depot is. Uh, Benny's Beverage Depot is a family owned and operated liquor store chain in Illinois. Uh, we've been family owned and operated since 1948, uh, been around for years. We've got 42 locations all over Illinois and we are dead serious about our cigars. That is, that is phenomenal. I mean, uh, you know, anytime, you know, my, you, you know what my favorite store is, right? Cause anytime I'm in Chicago, I got to stop in. It's the Lincolnwood store, right? The big it's one. Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park Sorry. on Marcy Street. Yeah, that Dude, is definitely I, I, a phenomenal store. Love that store, man. I mean, if if you guys ever go to Chicago, you know, you should go see the Tower. You should go see uh, Millennium Park. Go see the Bean. Uh, do your things, but make a stop into the Lincoln Park Benny's because it's just liquor wonderland in there. Yeah, that's um, the one with all the great mezcal selection in there too. <laughs> yeah, I had it to, is. Yeah, I, I, is, I, I live video. I live videoed Joey the first time I walked in there, and I said, "Dude, oh. sometimes you walk into a store and you see uh, just a couple of uh, mescals, and you guys had like a half all of them. aisle, <laughs> all, all of them. like four shelves filled, four or five shelves, and it was the most amazing uh, experience." So I felt I felt my credit card depleting just looking at it. Well, it, uh, that, Magic that Land, I, I would agree. That's, that's my other. That's my other favorite whiskey. <laughs> nice. So, Jack, uh, give us a little bit. How'd you get started with Benny's? Um, I started with Benny's about eight years ago, uh, part time in the beer department, uh, filling coolers, helping customers, and uh, had the opportunity to walk into a humidor and uh, fell in love with cigars. So through like two years I worked uh, humidor is one of our cigar consultants we've got one at almost every single location uh, to help anybody who know isn't sure what they're interested in or wants to start learning about cigars uh, after that I ended up in management for a couple of years and then got the job offer to come over to the cigar buying portion and uh, couldn't be more excited man uh, your team your team at Benny's is phenomenal from uh, from Brett over there uh, Joe Maloney, one of my favorite people, one of the most knowledgeable people in spirits I've ever met. And you guys have a great crew that works the humidor over there. Uh, yo, let us- me tell you, yo, yo, yo. Chicago loves, we're going to give a big shout out right now to Chicago. 
I mean, Chicago loves Drew Estate. And I'm going to tell you something. We, Joey, Joey over here has been with, with, with us from pretty much from the beginning. These guys, when we think back of Chicago and all the stuff we've done with that, that has been a beautiful place, beautiful city. And I've got to know Jack really well. And uh, he runs that whole cigar division over there at the at the Binny. So when you guys said that he was going to be your guest tonight, along with Mr. Rob Dietrich, of course, I was like, I am so pumped for the show. I put on, I put on the gold fronts because that you didn't see me nowhere in a gold fronts show one. Rob was there. Show two, hell no. This and Chris was great too. I mean, Chris was top. This we've had great guests, but Chicago. Damn, Colorado. Damn, this is like <laughs> excellent. You know what it is with New York, man. New Yorkers like us, Chicago's like you go there and it's home. You know, they're brothers. You know, it's that. That's the best part about Chicago is from a New York standpoint. You go there and you're like, wow, I feel at home here. These are my people. And that's that's why it's a great place to go, man. A great place to hang. Well, I, I love Chicago, so a little shout out to uh, to, to my boys uh, tuning in from Chicago, my boy Carlos Cuarta, hola, hermano, just one little shout out there. Uh, so Jack, I'm going to come back to you, so kind of describe the relationship, the kind of special relationship that we have with, with you guys, you know, Drew Estate, I think JD started to go down that, that, uh, that rabbit hole, but kind of Tell us a little bit about that special relationship with Drew Estate. We've been working with Drew Estate for years. Uh, earlier today, I was in our warehouse and I actually saw one of the first acid cabinets that Jonathan said he had to put together to originally sell acids because most humidors wouldn't carry them. They weren't sure. And yo, uh, yo, we, that was a guy, Nando, we threw him off a rooftop because <laughs> he wouldn't make the, he wouldn't make the fucking displays on time. And we were waiting for Marvin. All these people were screaming in Brooklyn, like, where's those displays? People go crazy for those displays. And we were in Nicaragua. We had no money. We were borrowing. And we were like, Nando, we locked the door on the second floor. We were like, you're going off the rooftop. And it, we, you know what we had to do to get you that fucking display? No idea. <laughs> we had to twist some arms. <laughs> uh, so... Let's just move on here. <laughs> Has seven years passed? I don't. I don't know. Someone help me out here. But, but I, I know that there's there's a great relationship between between Drew. I mean, every time we walk into your human doors, you know, our products are just so so beautifully displayed. And in, in that, uh, I want to bring into the conversation uh, Miss Robin Saint Pierre because uh, she works. She's work, she's our liaison between the entire Drew Estate organization and, and Benny's, and that's a huge job because you guys got 42 locations. So uh, Robin, what do you say about that? I love it. I've been, I was brought on January 6th this year um, and I'm a retail sales specialist. I visit all the stores with humidors and talk with the cigar consultants and you know help them with merchandising and um, helping them out with some Drew Estate education. And I just try to, you know, keep in contact with them. For me, I, I am their direct communication with Drew Estate. So I just love being a part of this whole thing between Drew Estate and Benny's. Well, that's, look, we're so honored to have you work on our behalf with one of our best clients and, uh, and with that, uh, Jack, uh, I need your help here, right? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce the pairing of the evening. So I'm going to pair this cocktail and, and this whiskey with something special. But, but let's, uh, let's go back a little bit. You and I first met uh, maybe 2016 on a cigar safari, because all the best shit happens at cigar safari, and everybody knows that. So uh, with Jeff Tunnell, right, and your group from, uh, from Benny's, and so I heard there was a challenge. You want, you want to talk about like there was a challenge, there was a bar set. I don't know. What were we talking about earlier? Well, we were talking about how we got down there a week after uh, a local Florida liquor store that might have possibly been on this show uh, a couple of weeks ago. 
And uh, we, uh, we were told by our gracious host while Jonathan was down there that uh, they drank more spirits than we did, but we smoked more cigars than they did. So I got to give credit to my team for uh, really stepping up over that safari and uh, smoking as many ligas as they could get their hands on. No, this is a perfect segment. Like Jack is good. He gave us a perfect segment, Joey, for you to talk a little bit about like, I liked everybody was going crazy about all the swag that you guys do between you and Cigar Safari. All that swag combo. Yeah. It's good. But you know what? I like the, I like the who could smoke more cigars at a safari combo. That's a good battle to have. Listen, I think the I Drew don't State think, crew. I think the I Drew State think, crew smokes more. Uh, no, uh, absolutely not. I, I will tell you the first oh, time that I saw these liquor chain guys r- rolling through, and they've got like two cigars, you know, and, and they're puffing, you know, and and, and maybe like I'll, I think I'll smoke four of them, four of them at a time, and uh, and they're just they're the most awesome dudes because they're really there for the experience, the knowledge, and the way that they're going to use that to communicate out to to our customers. And, and I think that that's, that's where there's a lot of love between, uh, between us and Benny's and thanks to you, Jack, for making that happen. So without further ado, what am I going to pair tonight with, uh, with black and whiskey? I'm going to pair top of the line, baby. Liga nine. All mm-hmm. right. So you got a Connecticut broadleaf Oscuro, meaning dark wrapper. Look at that. I mean, if you guys, if you don't have one in hand, um, I don't know what you're waiting on because this is it. This is it. This is this is the premium stick. This is our hit album. All right. So, you know, what's a uh, Brazilian uh, binder, Honduran, Nicaraguan uh, filler. Just the most beautiful expression of a cigar. The Liga 9 puts us on the map with, with iconic brands that are at the top, top level of any industry, you know, I won't mention any other uh, like brands, but uh, but Jack, how do you feel about a Liga 9? A Liga 9 is easily one of my favorite cigars. Um, I'm not saying this because I'm on the show. You can ask me any day of the week and the Liga 9 is in my box. I smoke <laughs> way too many, but uh, but it, it's been one of my favorites ever since I was in the humidor selling them. And I think what you've put together with the, the blackened and the Liga 9 works almost perfectly together. The earthiness of the Liga 9 really balances with the, the rye content and that sweetness from the brandy cask. I mean, like you get a little bit of that espresso note from the cigar, and each sip, each puff makes you want another one from either. Um, you know, kind of thinking about, you know, the, the uh, main tenets that I, that in episode one, I kind of went into, um, do you reinforce or do you contrast? And I think this is kind of uh, falls under reinforcement. You know, we're kind of along the same lines. We're reinforcing some of the, the, the main flavors that are flowing through this. Uh, the Liga 9 is, is wonderfully uh, intense, but not to the degree where it's overwhelming. And I think the whiskey does the same thing. And there's just beautiful notes floating around uh, when you when you get through the, the Liga that are, uh, you know, the, the wrapper's toothy oily, uh, you know, the, the, the blend of fillers is just so flavorful, but it's, it's smooth. It's smooth. So, uh, you know, I mean, the, you, you, the, the uh, great thing about a Liga, let me, let me, let me jump in here. So yeah, the great uh, thing about a Liga is, and I know some people think, oh, it's so dark. It must be really strong. And it's not that it's strong, man. It's, it's full flavored. And like you could smoke a Liga nine, and then you can light up another League of Nine right after that because you, you didn't get crushed by it. You had an amazing time with it, but now your palate is activated and you want to have another one. And that's the real sign of a really great cigar and a really great blend and, and, a, and, a, and a great bourbon or a whiskey too is the same thing. It's like, wow, you've had it and now I'm going to go back for another. You know, that's the real, that's the real magic behind it. I, I would agree. I mean, that's the beauty. When you have a, when you have a, a, a an amazing cigar. I mean, and, and you're right. It's, uh, um, I, I, I generally, I generally like, um, uh, a little bit of lighter tobaccos you know, the dark tobacco, you start thinking it's going to be too dark. Uh, it's, it's extraordinary how well it pairs with, uh, with blackened and yeah. the, the balance of, 
you know, you, you gotta, if you're going to have top of the line, you have, you have, you have, you know, your top of the line cigar, you got a top of the line whiskey. And that's uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful balance. Yes. Jack, this is for you. I mean, what do your customers say about like Liga? How, how is it fitting in their palate? The customers love Liga. Uh, it's, it's, I would say hard for us to keep a good enough stock, but we do a pretty good job and work closely with Drew Estates to make sure that we've got a wide variety of Unico series and uh, your T52s, your number nines, uh, just about anything you could want. I, I really do suggest stopping into one of our humidors and taking a look at the league of selection available. I'm and excited to see it right to behind I know, right? <laughs> That's right nice. There. Perfect. Uh, but I heard flying pigs are coming back out pretty soon. So I'm excited to get those and uh, add a few more of those to my box. Uh, JD, before I, before I move on, uh, you know, I don't want to talk about the history of Liga. I think you need to talk about the history of Liga or Joey needs to talk about the history of Liga. So hit it, homie. That's a JD, man. Let JD do history. No, it's not a JD. You know, what I, I mean, like it's though is is that we kind of like triangulate, nebulate around a little bit and and share different perspectives. I mean, JD's got his history of Liga Pravada. It is a Drew Estate history. There was some people involved who who are no longer with Drew Estate who are permanently part of that. Joey was part of it, myself, six, seven people down in Nicaragua who were the ones intensely. But then there's everybody's perspective in the U.S. I've heard from 20 retailers. I was the first retailer with Liga Pravada. I go, yo, Wu-Tang is about the children. But how did you come up with you were the first retailer? I've heard the same thing with Acid. Everybody's got a perspective on something. I like Joey's perspectives on when you were talking about all that. I still have that swag conversation. I keep talking about it. <laughs> Robin, what's your take on, uh, on Liga's? I love Liga. Um, I started smoking them. I recently started smoking like two years ago. And my first cigar was one of the Drew Estate cigars. It was actually the Crazy Alice. And I quickly moved to traditional cigars. And Liga, just the flavor is amazing. And I've just, I mean, I've been in love with them ever since. That's because you're getting a crazy discount because you now work for Drew State. No, even before <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah, switched over all of a sudden to Liga Pravada. Yeah. <laughs> Shit for free. Fuck you think is going on? No, oh, not always. I still buy some. I support us. Yo, you know what's interesting about this line? Dietrich is, you know, where I watch you work with booze, how you... One time he sent me this picture. He was standing in front of the vodka distillery, one of the biggest vodka distilleries in the world that your company had sold. And they called you or something to run the play. It was crazy. And what I really love is all the background stuff that's not what you see on the box. The stuff that happened, there was a hurricane. It knocked out this. We needed to move this wrapper from here to there. The fucking wrapper wouldn't burn after two and a half years and everybody's pissed off blaming each other, thinking about how to heat the floor to increase the intensity for the pilones. How are you gonna do Putting plastic bags on the pilones, adding water, burning la grasa, the fat from the bottom of the leaf. There was no grasa left. You couldn't prime that. You couldn't ferment that leaf anymore. That all of those little creep, that creepy ass stories that were behind the scenes, that's a lot of the stuff, you know, in, as far as hitting the main brand side of it. The Liga Pravada has been a game changer in, in the industry, you know, in the premium cigar industry. And uh, for us, I think that uh, how you guys in the spooze industry have, have connected to that cigar has been very in interesting. And uh, I wonder with uh, Jack over at Binnie's, do you get like your serious cigar nerds, who's buying Liga Pravada over there? Is it like the hardcore dudes and are they doing pairings and stuff like that? I get geeked out on all that. I like that a lot of stuff. I think it's a mix. Just about everybody's buying Ligas. Uh, you do have your, your hardcore cigar nerds who come in and hunt out the latest and greatest. Uh, they want to know what type of spirits we'd pair with it. 
how we go about it. We usually direct them over to our liquor consultants to give them some idea of how to play. But uh, yeah, everybody should have a Liga. Everybody should try one. And pick up a number nine. Do yourself a favor. <laughs> I'm going to say that that's probably like the best line. Do yourself a favor. Pick up a Liga nine. Mm-hmm. Yo, Jack's right. giving so much promos. It's crazy. It's across the board. So that's Safari, Liga died. Jack so, uh, from one from one to the other. Well, Jack, thank you. Thank you so much, man. Stick around. I've got to move on to the Ask Frankie Drinks, but uh, I'm beyond honored to have you on Sticks and Sips. Robin, you as well. Uh, so stick around. You know, we're we're gonna have our own after party. Uh, once once the broadcast is over. So stick around, guys. Um, with that, we move to the Q&A section where, uh, where somebody's going to win a Pappy Van Winkle or five people are going to win a Pappy Van Winkle pewter ashtray, beautiful item made by Subculture Studios. And I'm so excited right now because I get to get these cool-ass questions. So congratulations to these guys that were chosen. Jeremy Smith. Congratulations. Your question was chosen. Uh, Frankie, how did you get into bartending mixology? Where do you get your inspirations for cocktails from? Well, I'll take the, 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 the second half of that. So it's kind of been like a 10 year journey on this, uh, being involved with spirits. And it actually started with, uh, one of my, one of my homeboys buying a liquor store and what a, what a better way to do it. But some say it goes all the way back to high school when I was, uh, too poor to afford Bartles and James. So I had to freaking make my own and I made it in the five gallon jugs and it was the hit of the party. So you can say that that was the birth of mixology uh, with me. Uh, So it it all depends, but you get your inspirations from looking at classics. So understanding how classic cocktails are and uh, the, the fate to black in Manhattan is a riff on a classic, but you've got to know the classic first. So, uh, Pick up a Jerry Thomas, but pick, pick up those pre-prohibition cocktails and, and kind of take a look at them and see how you tweak them to your palate. So congratulations. Uh, second, second winner for the ashtray, Mr. Stephen Finley. All right. So what should be the first essential purchase to set up my own home bar? All right. Fantastic question. So as we started... Uh, the entire sticks and sips, I want to run you through all styles of whiskey. So we, you know, remember we did traditional uh, bourbons first and, and, and they were uh, traditional style, meaning uh, high corn content. Uh, we still haven't done uh, high rye bourbons. We still haven't done weeded bourbons, and, but we did like a sample of an American style whiskey, which is still part of the whiskey portfolio for for what we consider whiskeys. And there's actually something new. There's peated American whiskeys, brand new category. So uh, you kind of got to hit both things. You got you to gotta hit uh, a little bit of, of your whiskeys, your vodkas, your gins, your rums, and your tequilas and mezcals. So if you start with a very simple layout of the the, the you know, five basic spirits, then you can go from there. And there you build to your modifiers and modifiers like Averna Amaro. So I hope that answers your question, Stephen. Congratulations. All right, next up, Chico Ray. Uh, that's like a Hollywood name. Chico Ray, you got yourself a Pappy Van Winkle ashtray. Uh, when it comes to non-alcoholic beverages, what would you pair with a Liga 9? Whoa, that's fantastic. And, you know, I'm so glad that that robin you said you were having a dr pepper so dr pepper has got so many other flavors you know it's it's kind of you know whatever we won't say prune soda but it's prune soda you know so you got plums you got prunes you've got a a, you know a sassafras in there you've got all these other flavors that are kind of like very complex and they make a wonderful wonderful compliment because you're getting all these like coffee notes, you're getting these leather notes, you're getting these intense notes, and then you're getting these herbal notes from the other side. And they kind of like, they're contrasting, but to create a great compliment. So I think that that's fantastic. So Chico Ray, congratulations. Corey Alford, congratulations on your ashtray. Uh, Corey, 
Uh, what are the major differences in blackened whiskey? And what would you recommend to someone who has never tried blackened before? Uh, I'm going to defer that question to my man, Rob Dietrich. Uh, Rob, what makes what makes blackened different than uh, other American whiskeys? Uh, first and foremost, we are uh, we are an extraordinary blend of many American whiskeys. So we are about as American as you can get. We've got uh, we've got uh, you know again you know, like I was saying we've got we've got whiskey from Tennessee, we've got bourbon from Kentucky, Indiana, Canadian rye. This is this is all North America. These are all ingredients. When you think about terroir and where people grow their ingredients in the water, uh, you, you, you know, everybody in Kentucky, it's about that water that runs across the limestone. It's all those little tiny little um, elements that that comprise one beautiful whole to make a unique uh, unique whiskey. I think um, the, the the most extraordinary aspect of our whiskey is that it's it's a it's a uh, it, it's it's already amazing whiskey in the first place. Then you throw this this uh, black noise um, process to it, and it, it it just takes it to a whole nother whole nother level. Well, that's uh, thank you yeah. for that elaborate uh, answer. So, congratulations uh, on that ashtray. So, I've got another question here uh, from C. Robinson. C. Um, Robinson. Yes, it's just been turned off. This, this now is we turned it on. So this is a question for Rob. Where did the name Blackened come from? I really like the whiskey so much that I even have a Blackened hat that I wear. And Chris is, uh, is it Chris or C? Robinson the third is a black male in the 30s. You should see some of the looks I get wearing the hat. All right, <laughs> so I'm going to first answer that because, you know, I'm a Metallica fan back from the day, so... Yeah. So Blackened goes back to an album called And Justice for All. So you got to listen to, you got to listen to that, you know. So see Robinson the 3rd, enjoy your ashtray and uh you know, I'm glad you're wearing the same swag I am wearing. And uh yeah, dude, we could talk offline about what what looks you get wearing that hat, but I will tell you pick up And Justice for All. And then you'll understand. And, and actually, we we have one last one last question. And uh, this one doesn't get an ashtray, but it gets this really nice pen. So uh, this is from Chris Gwaltney. Uh, hey, Jack, what cigar pairs well with Malort? Oh, we got your sound cut off. So... Uh, See, yeah, that's jump on good. The, cutting off the fucking sound, everybody. Uh, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, hang on, man. I'm gonna fix this right now. So, Jack, what pairs <laughs> well with Malort, brother? From your from your brother Chris Gwaltney at ABC in Florida. Chris, nothing pairs well with Malort. Absolutely nothing. Anything from Gypsy Tears to uh, use band aids. That's what it tastes like. Nothing will pair with Malort. Uh, I, I highly <laughs> disagree. Uh, Stomach illness, <laughs> unease, and queasiness pairs amazingly with Malort. So uh, bad decisions. <laughs> bad decisions pair well with Malort. So thank you, Chris. You get this lovely pen. Uh, I'll, I'll get it out to you. Thank you, Jack, for answering that question. So if you guys are not from Chicago, uh, find out about Malort. You, you'll love it. I, I I promise. This is a this is a great thing. So. With that, guys, you know, it's the uh, it's the wrap up, uh, except that, uh, Joey, I've got you on there, man. So this is last shot of the night. What's the last shot of the night, Joey? Oh, it's a bottle I just picked up. It's uh, El Gregorio Mescal. And that's my last shot of the night, being the contrarian to combat all the, all the whiskey we just had. And we're going to go down the rabbit hole with this. And, uh, and Rob, man, when we get back online with everything, we need to go to We'll hock it together and we'll be Frankie and maybe JD will want to hop along for the ride and go further down that rabbit hole. But cheers to you, brother, man. Thank you for a great night tonight. Road trip. Cheers yo, to you yo, yo. Road and trip. Cheers. Road trip. And cheers to our man over here. This motherfucker's always got this microphone game going on. And also cheers out to our man, Jack. Don't forget Jack about <laughs> Jack could come down too if he wants to come to Oaxaca. Jack, we're, we're going to Oaxaca, man. We're going to Nicaragua first and then we'll go to Mexico. 
Yeah, you guys are here talking about taking all sorts of fancy trips, speaking special languages, and you didn't even include Jack after all of what he's done and Chris Waltney. You guys got a big ass marketing budget at your estate, being all greedy. (laughs) All right. So with that, I'm going to say, listen, uh, this is last call. So uh, understand that now in Corona, we're still dealing with with COVID-19. Uh, a lot of individuals and businesses are being enormously affected by this. So uh, go out and support your local cigar shops and uh, your liquor stores. A lot of liquor stores are essential businesses uh, in most states. So they're still open. They're open for business. They got curbside. They got delivery. Um, support them. Those businesses that support Drew Estate. So get your, your sips. Get your sticks. And, uh, and with support uh, hospitality through USBG Hospitality, just like uh, Black and Does. And uh, with that, special thanks to my guest tonight, uh, Rob Dietrich. Thank you for being part of Sticks and Sips. No, thank Jack you. Spethman, thank you so much for being part of Sips and Sticks or Sticks and Sips. <laughs> Robin, yes. thank you for being part of you. And sips. And uh, so I want to thank the entire DE marketing crew for making SNS possible. Uh, I want a special shout out to uh, Aron out there in the control room, making, uh, making this uh, technologically possible. Uh, Jack, for being our kind of producer for this show. Not kind of, he is. He's a producer for the show. And David Torres for his amazing graphics. The entire D family, that sales, warehouse, factory, leadership, keeping us disruptive through this, and but we're not going to stop. And finally, everyone tuned in tonight for Sticks and Sips. Thank you so much. Thank follow you. us. Follow us on Twitter. At Drew Estate Cigar. <coughs> Frankie <laughs> underscore drinks. <laughs> Uh, stay at home, stay safe, hashtag cover your mouth, hashtag wash your hands, hashtag six and, sticks and sips. Wow. It gets hard. It gets harder to say. Oh, my God. This is, a, and <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite way to cover my mouth. There you go. Right, so hey. cover your mouth. Uh, hey. Big there announcement next week. Our guest, Carrie Van Winkle from Pappy and Co. And Jonathan Drew. Special Yo, guest. What's up? What up? Uh, also, next week we're going Facebook Live only, so make sure you you tune in to Drew Estate Cigars Rebirth of Cigars on Facebook to watch this. And with that, uh, I'm done. I can Ring get the to bell. Drinking. I'm gonna light up a cigar. And with that, guys, peace. Thank you all so much for being part of it. Guys, for watching. Love you. What? I'll see you next week, man. I'll see you next week with Pappy Van Winkle and JD. What can I say? Same time, same place. Peace. Yeah, yo, peace. The f- hey, everyone. <laughs> I'm the Cigar and Spirits pairing specialist for Drew Estate. I'm also the ambassador of the Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve Barrel Fermented line of cigars. It is an honor and privilege to represent Drew Estate Cigar Company. Through our rich and innovative history, we truly have created something for everyone's palate. Together, we will travel to different locations to experience cigar pairings with spirits, cocktails, beverages, and food. Along the way, we will explore a few locations, hang in a few bars, learn some history, and truly celebrate our lifestyle. Come join me as we embark on this journey of discovery. Cheers!